Hey, everybody. Welcome to Under the Arch Sports. I'm Eric Hobbs. And I'm David Woolian. And it's time for us to preview Cotton Bowl, Mizzou, against Ohio State. Before we get into that, please, guys, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the video, sign up for all the notifications, and also find us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on X. Yeah, David, hey. Uh, first, hope you, hope everybody watching, had a great uh, Christmas. And uh, this is a game, David, the you know, 88th Mountain Bowl Classic, the official name of it, where motivation is going to be a big big factor for the two teams yeah you got on the one side mizzou who's super excited to play against ohio state their fan base sold out their allotment in like 24 hours uh seems like half the state is planning on making a trip down to the game uh then on the other side you got ohio state who missed the playoffs kind of disappointed and they're just looking at this like a eh, type game you know you know it, it, it's understandable to an extent for Ohio State. They they were the first team to be ranked number one in the college football playoff rankings, right? Uh, you know, Halloween, the week after, I think, they were number one. And it was a matter of just, you know, the schedule, resume to that point, that sort of thing. And then Georgia took over at number one, all that. But they were number one, and they were number two – until they lost to their arch rival Michigan, they were that close, you know, what, 30, 40 yards away from a game winning drive. And then they're the one that gets to absolutely destroy Iowa and end up number one. Instead, playing little old Mizzou in the Cotton Bowl in a game that, frankly, yeah, it's not anywhere near as sexy as the college football playoff, especially because. So a lot of Ohio State fans and administration and so forth, Missouri's not a name. So I think that's part of it is, you know, Missouri might, might feel disrespected. Maybe they should. That, yeah, this game, I think, to a lot of Ohio State fans, might feel a little bit beneath what they deserved. But it's a New Year's Six Bowl. I, you know, it, it, it's tough. There's not a whole lot else you can do. Beat your rival, right? Well, and I've seen I've I've also seen a lot of people in Ohio State say so think they're just gonna run over us again because of who we are and what they think we are. So um I mean they're like I said, they're just kind of writing this game off. Yeah, and for Missouri, this plays right into the season motto, uh something to prove STP, where a lot of people are saying, oh. Little old Mizzou against one of the names in college football. It's a perfect opportunity. This matchup is for Drinkwitz to just feed, just feed into that that season long mantra that the players have bought into. Right, so that is a great opportunity for the Tigers, I think. Now, well, you you know, part of this is to do with who's going to play and who's not, David, for Missouri. It's it's cut and dried. And it's Drake Straw, Tyron Hopper, not playing. That's due to injuries. If they were healthy, they'd be playing, all indications are. At least there'd be a choice to make. That's 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 that, that plays into the excitement, the motivation, everything we just talked about. Everybody who can play physically is gonna suit up on Friday. Yeah. And on top of that, uh, from what we know as of right now, there haven't been a lot of just transfer portal people from the starters or anything like that either. Any Anybody from Mizzou who's sitting in a transfer portal are, are all def chart pieces, uh, which is understandable if they're trying to find a place to play. Uh, and even then, Drink is allowing them to play in this game or come to the game as well. So, I mean, like you said – the players have definitely bought into the STP brotherhood, if you will. And I think, I think they can use this game if they manage to pull off the victory, especially as a springboard in the next year too. Yes. And I think we can talk about that maybe towards the end, maybe right before picks, we'll talk about meaning for 2024 and all that. Uh, Cause it, there, there's a valid point to be made there. 
For Ohio State, their situation is a lot murkier. And I think you start with what you know. Kyle McCord, the quarterback, kind of felt like he got run out of town after he just failed to live up to the insane standard that Ohio State quarterback play has. Going back to C.J. Stroud and Justin Fields and all the way back to J.T. Barrett and even further back. He's he's on Syracuse's team now. Then you also have Julian Fleming, the receiver, starter, who has left the Buckeye program, along with running back uh, Chip Trainum, who wasn't the starting running back, but he was the only guy besides Travion Henderson to have more than 50 carries. And he was a good compliment because while Henderson... You know, he wasn't a total just scat back, get to the outside, outrun people. Train him 235 pounds. That is a change of pace in terms of power that the Buckeyes no longer have. And all of this, David, before Marvin Harrison Jr.'s situation. <laughs> yeah, and who knows what's going to happen with him. Uh, first practice of the bull. A uh, week, if you will, he was with the team down there in his jersey, but he did not participate in drills or anything. So I know um, early on they said he was planning on playing, but who knows with him sitting out that first practice now if he actually is going to play or not. Well, while the media was there, this is Tuesday's practice. He was on the exercise bike, just slowly, just kind of pedaling with a practice jersey over street clothes. As soon as those pictures and reports hit the internet, Twitter, X, I think all of Buckeye Nation just decided he ain't playing. That's certainly the vibe that we both got when we searched online, trying to find if there's been any sort of announcement or leak or anything. So what we're left with is Ohio State fans certainly do not think he's going to play. Him not practicing Tuesday lends itself to that. But I don't think we're going to have an official announcement, if we get one at all, until Friday at some point. Maybe even minutes before the game. Now, you know, that they don't have Ohio State. A lot of transfer issues with the defensive side of the ball, but they've had injuries, most notably... All everything linebacker Tommy Eichenberg, who missed a couple of games after hurting his arm in the Rutgers game. He was able to go in the Michigan game. There was concern about it. He did practice Tuesday. That's the biggest lift, I think, for, for Ohio State, is that defensively, everything looks to be pretty intact, including their leader. And that was a concern. Now, David. Yeah, and... It Oh, go ahead. Having him as I was going to say, having him on their defensive side of the ball is a huge lift, especially because they're considered the number three total defense in the country. Um, and we'll get into that in a second. But um, I do believe he plans on playing, and he also accepted an invite to the 2024 Senior Bowl as well. So, I mean, it's going to be a challenge for Mizzou's offense, but I think they're going to be up to it. Yeah, you know, I want to look at now Ohio State when they have the ball facing the Missouri defense. I'd say over the last 10 years, fans have gotten used to seeing an outrageous Ohio State offense that just outscores the other team while the defense, well, they they, they try. <laughs> this offense for Ohio State is a little bit different. They're still very good. You know, Marvin Harrison Jr., Emeka Abuka, and Julian Fleming, that's still a killer uh, receiver core, along with tight end Cade, Cade Stover, who looks like he's going to give it a go. I, th I think this game, you start at quarterback, and Devin Brown, redshirt freshman, only played mop-up duty this season. The one thing that he does give you is he's got a little bit more escapability than Kyle McCord had. Yeah, and he has a killer arm too. Uh, yes. His ability to throw the ball, his ability to throw the ball downfield, is going to be a challenge for Mizzou, especially with Rake Straw out, and it's definitely going to challenge our defensive backs and safeties. 
Um, I think the key for Mizzou in this game is to get pressure on him and force him into uncomfortable throwing positions, if you will. I agree. I agree. Now, Missouri's defense does have to be ready for the fact that he is a little bit more mobile than Kyle McCord. He's not you know, Superman back there and can escape anything, and you're not expecting him to carry the ball 10 times and get 100 yards on, on QB design runs. But there's more there in terms of running ability. So it wouldn't surprise me if Ryan Day had a couple of, of run plays dialed up just to check to see that Blake Baker and the Missouri defense had accounted for his running ability. And if they did, all right. We know now we know and we're not trying that. But if they didn't, and Blake Baker didn't prep the, the Tigers for that, well, Buckeyes could have something there. So I think that's something that they have to be aware of Missouri, but as long as they're prepped for it and acknowledge the fact that he can run around a little bit, I think they'll be all right. And to your point, this is a guy who doesn't have extended experience, first career start coming here. Make him prove that he can handle the heat and throw the ball on the run. Make him prove it. Because if he can, all right, now, you know, maybe you got to drop seven into coverage. But on the other hand, if he's not up to it, Chris Abrams Drain could have him a pick or two. You can drain Norwood or Marcus Clark or heck, you know, Jalen Carnell, Joseph Carlson. I Charleston, there's there's options back there for guys who honestly are gonna have lots of opportunities if Harrison isn't going, especially. Yeah, and I think you're going to see a heavy dose of a run game from Ohio State as well, from Henderson. Uh, so it's going to be a challenge to our linebackers with Hopper out uh, to yeah. maybe slow him down because he's a big back too. So they got to find a way to slow him down. Um, D-line is going to have to play gap defense, if you will, while trying to get pressure on the quarterback as well. And it's a tough job assignment for them because of that. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the injury that affects Missouri more, honestly. It's it's something where Rakestraw, I think, is a better player, honestly. But because of the depth and just because of the linebacker position, the way it is, you got to be able to do a little bit of everything. Tyron Hopper's absence, I think, will be bigger impact. We saw what happened in the Florida game where Missouri just was getting gashed against the run and there's a concern there yeah but you know hopefully for missouri with a month to prep they've got something figured out you know we'll see what happens there again in the secondary there's there's at least depth there probably a drop off yes but i have a certain degree of confidence in Drayden norwood's ability um especially because he's had extended time yeah. In games already. Yeah, Rick Strauss so, been in and out of the lineup all season. So, so he's proven he's proven he's a solid cornerback. Yeah, and you know, with with these injuries, these are not new injuries. So both team or both injuries have had the backups get playing time and the defense has had time to adjust. So Missouri does have that going for them. And I do think when Ohio State runs the ball, I think you're gonna see a lot of Travion Henderson. I think it's going to be a situation where Ohio State tries to find out, can we just take the pressure off our new quarterback by running the ball? And if Missouri can stuff the run and make Ohio State put the offense on Devin Brown's shoulder, the, the Tigers' chances go exponentially up. Exactly. Now, let, yeah, let, let, let's flip over to when Missouri has the ball. They're going to be going against – you know, probably the best defense they've seen all season. Statistically, it certainly is. Ohio State ranks number three in America in total defense, giving up basically 260 yards total per game. They are the number one passing defense team in America, giving up, what was it, 112, 114, something gaudy like that. That's like 100, it, 112, 114 yards a game. Yeah, it's crazy. Per game. That's wild. And it's, it's something where 
you know, I don't know how much of these numbers are impacted by just the absolute crap the Big Ten offenses are, especially some of the ones they played. We take out two of the non-conference games they played. They played three, and one was Notre Dame, who's good. You have Youngstown State, Western Kentucky, trash. Michigan State, Minnesota, trash. Indiana, trash. There was a sixth one. I can't even remember who it was off the top of my head. Purdue, that's who it was. That's half the schedule that are just hideous offenses. And I know the SEC, you know, you have bad offensive teams. You have a Vandy, you have even South Carolina, I think. But, yeah, I, I, I wonder how much are those numbers inflated? I have no doubt that Ohio State is a top 20, try top 15 defense. But I don't think... You need, I don't think fans need to be as scared of those numbers as they might otherwise be. Uh, they're, they're, they're run defense. Not quite uh, as good. Number 22 in America. Once 112 again. yards per game. Yeah. So good. Not as good, at least statistically, as the Tennessee defense that Mizzou shredded. So, sorry, I got distracted. Cody Schrader was just running by some balls over there. Um yeah, it was something where I, I think Ohio State's going to be good. It's going to be hard. But I don't think this Missouri offense is intimidated at all. And again, as always, it starts up front with the offensive line protecting Brady Cook and letting Cody Schrader get to work. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the strength of Mizzou in this game, quite honestly. Um, because, again, the 22-run defense in the country, 112 per game, tells me there's a there's a possibility that you can find a weakness there, especially against Ohio State's D-line. Uh, the way our offensive line has played this year, uh, this game's like typical most football games are. It's definitely going to be one in the trenches. Yeah. Um and quite honestly, I think Mizzou's O line is going to dominate because I mean, they were still able to put up major yards against Georgia and some of the other teams uh, just by opening those holes. And if you can do that in the SEC's big boys, if you will, um, you can do that against anybody. In all honesty, so I expect Georgia couldn't stop that stretch do- play. Yeah. Yeah, I I expect I expect Mizzou to do what they do best, run the ball, which will open up the passing game, um, and I expect Schrader to have another 150 yard rush game. Quite honestly, especially because now that he has a month off, he'll be healthy. Um, I don't know if a lot of you guys remember, but he's been playing with like a quad injury all year that he's been trying to nurse. So this yep. extra month, not only with him, but with Brady Cook and his nagging leg injuries, if you will, too, uh, really are going to open up our offense a lot more than people realize, I think. Yeah, I'm really curious to see just how much Brady Cook is used in the running game because it doesn't matter how many times you see it, you just aren't ready for him to keep the ball and, one, try to run, and then, two, be as fast as he is. It's just, let's let's face it, he's – you know, he's got the red curly hair, you know, kind of pasty white. He doesn't look like he's a fast dude. And I'm not trying to make fun of him. I'm just saying there are people who look fast. He does not look like he's going to take the ball and run right by you. So that's something that well, I, I think you test Ohio State's defense. And let's let's find out. All right. Number one, number one, pass defense. Number three, overall, all, all these accolades, whatever good are you can you stop a mobile quarterback yeah and i think using his legs especially in a pass game is really going to open up the pass game because now they have to account for him running the ball as well as throwing it downfield um and our line i think like i said before is really good at pass protection so that he'll have plenty of time how long can that secondary uh cover guys like Luther Burden, who's going to be healthy, another player who's been having nagging injuries. And then you have Theo Weiss and then Mookie Cooper playing against his old team. You know, he's going to want to do his best too. So 
it's going to be real interesting to see how Ohio State tackles this offense because I think with a mobile uh, Brady Cook and then you have Cody Schrader just running up and hitting holes like he does, it's the three-headed monster, if you will, and almost every team we played against has struggled to stop it. So it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, and I think you 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 were onto something saying that Brady Cook will have time because what was surprising, and honestly, it's kind of baffling the more I think about it. Ohio State was 112.7 yards passing allowed per game, which is absurd. 147. 47, excuse me. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, uh, well, under 150 passing yards a game allowed. And – they only had 22 sacks on the season. So it's not like they had quarterbacks running for their life all the time. You would expect with a pass defense that good, you have more than 22 sacks. That was tied with Florida and Temple for 91st in the country. And I was stunned when I saw that. I couldn't believe it. And I think that well, that's a- is going to be something where Missouri's offensive line perhaps is just a brick wall and keeps their defensive line away from Brady Cook. Well, and that's a tip of a cat to Ohio State secondary, too, because if you have yeah. a quarterback with all the time in the world, eventually someone's going to get open. And the fact that they still kept things to 147 yards average, that means people weren't getting open or they were making plays when the ball was up in the air. So that's another thing to keep in mind with Mizzou's passing game, and that's where Brady Cook's legs are really going to come in handy, I think. Yeah. And let's be honest with ourselves. I think that sack – thing stunning though it is i think there's a little bit of a of a flukish feel to that and the reason i say that is think of all the teams they blew out this season and how those teams well we're down 20 we need we got throw 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 if we're going to come back you would expect a lot of passing yards just in garbage time trying to catch up and ohio state just trying to you know give up the little stuff and not give up the home run ball that can make it a game again. They still under 150 yards. That is impressive. The more I think about it, even with, especially given the sacks. Well, and even if the sacks aren't there, how many, how many of those plays are pressures and forcing the quarterback to get rid of the ball before they want to things like that. Um, They could have a lot of quarterbacks just making poor decisions and dumping the ball or making quick decisions and dumping the ball before they get hit, too. So even though they have 22 sacks, I could see they have a lot more pressures on the QB and things like that, too. Right. Again, I think it plays a little bit into the notion of the 22 sacks being a bit of a fluke um, because, I mean, they are talented, the Ohio State defense and defensive line. Now, David, at the very beginning, we talked about the importance of this game it kind of goes back to the, the motivation thing that was the first thing we talked about. For Ohio State, it is a bit of a transition. Next year is a fresh start with a new quarterback. Your top five NFL pick wide receivers gone. There's going to be a different feel in Columbus. For Missouri, this is a team that has a lot coming back, especially on offense. And... Given the schedule and the way everything is shaking out, feels like a year to go for broke. So Missouri absolutely wants this game for more tangible reasons. They're not forcing themselves to be motivated like Ohio State could be. And you know, with the idea of something to prove and getting momentum, continuing into a potential playoff year in 2024, remember 12-team playoff, that's big. And I think it's going to impact how this game unfolds. You know, it it was Ohio State was a touchdown favorite. Phil McCord went in the portal. If Marvin Harrison Jr. officially announces, you'll see that line get pulled and Missouri will be a three to five point favorite, I think, as it is now. Ohio State's a one point favorite. So it's coin flip. And over under a 49, that's saying essentially... 30 points wins this game, and I agree. I think it's going to be a close game where any any mistake is magnified. You know, the the Connor Tolleson type of goofy snap infraction things. 
things of that nature are going to be gigantic. I do think motivation and who wants to be there is going to kind of put the Tigers over the top. I'm going to pick them to beat Ohio State 27-20. I agree with Eric. I think um, Mizzou has a lot more to prove in this game. Plus, I think they're using this as a launch for next year. Yep. Um, as you said, the schedule is very favorable to Mizzou in the SEC next year. And um, I think Brady Cook is going to take it personal, too, because there's a lot of naysayers about can he win the big, big game. Uh, can he put a drive together? He kind of put that to bed with the that final drive against the Florida, Florida. game. But, yeah. But I think he's going to build off his success as well. And I'm not going to say he's going to pass 300 yards. I don't think that's the case. But I think he's going to no. leave this offense down the field. And I do think they're going to hit that 30-point threshold you were talking about. I have Mizzou winning 38 – or not 38, excuse me, 32 to 24. Uh, and I think the big key in this game is the offense and defense line are going to go to work. Uh, they're big, they're strong, they're fantastic, and I think they're just going to do what they do best and on the line of scrimmage in this game. Yeah, it's, it's a huge game. It's a huge opportunity. And, you, you know, hey, guys, come find us. We'll be there. We'll be at the, uh, what, the alumni uh, tailgate deal at the Rangers ballpark. We'll be there, and then we'll be in, in the 200s running around in the stadium. So uh, see us. Say hi. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a, uh, a Facebook live feed or something while we're down there, too. Mm. I can uh, show you how terrible Eric is at throwing a baseball or something at Globe Life Field. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, we're looking forward to it. In the meantime, I hope everybody enjoys bowl season. We'll keep you updated on all things Mizzou and all things St. Louis. So make sure you stay tuned to anything under the arch. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys have a happy new year.